at the moment, the AI world is all about the deep research. Nice and deep. Now, let's check out Gemini AI and its offering. So when you log in, it looks like this, but I have paid money to access this. This is not free. But when you pay money, this is Gemini Advanced up here. You click here and you get all of these options. This is what we're interested in right here. 1.5 Pro with deep research. Get in-depth answers. Yes, we like that. Click there and then you get all of this sort of like stuff down here. And you can see that they're kind of pushing you to say research, research, research. So I want to research. Does nose hair make you repulsive and let me tell you now that I'm nearly 40 nose hair ear hair oh it's just everywhere it's just so much effort anyway that's not what this video is about this is about AI so doesn't does nose hair make you repulsive you click here and then sort of like it goes away and it starts to formulate a plan now unlike chat GPT unlike SciSpace and other sort of like deep research tools it doesn't ask you clarifying questions or at least that's not been my experience here it comes up with a research plan right away and so here you can see that it says okay I I need to go away and research websites. This is all of the researching website stuff I need to do. Then it analyzes the results, creates a report, and it's ready in a few minutes. Now, in all of my tests, it's been about sort of like 10 to, uh, well, maybe a bit less, but no more than 10 minutes to produce a result. But that's all right, you can just like walk away, but you can also just close this down. It will send you a little sort of like notification on your phone and say, hey, it's all done. So you can walk away, hands off, love that. But here, if you want to change something, you've got this option down here, edit plan. Now, now, the one thing I don't like about this is if you click on edit plan, it just then sends you into a chat kind of format. That isn't very good because I want to sort of like edit here, but I can't do that. Um, but you can sort of say, well, don't do this. Don't do step one. Um, and let's have a look. So here, if you want to change it, I can say, OK, make that science based and I'll click submit. And then it will look at that and just say, OK, how do I change it? It will give me another research plan. So just a sec, I've updated the list. So here we are. This is find science based surveys or polls. So it did update it. Great 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 and then when we're all happy with that we click on start research and the ui will change there we are so this is what it looks like here we've got the chat sort of like area and then here we've got the starting research and it will give you all of the kind of updates and what it's found and where it's gone to so you can just keep an eye on that if that's something that's interesting to you so you can see here look it's gone to all of these kind of like websites it's even gone to youtube it's gone to different edu stuff um it's gone to wikipedia so yeah this is all of the stuff where it's like okay i should go here to find uh you know information about your question but you don't have to wait because I've done it for you. Let's check out what I did before. So I asked it about my research field, research nanocomposite transparent electrode materials and the use in touch screens. And you can see it came up with a research plan here. And then I said, yes, yeah, start research. Off we go. And this is what it created. Now, a couple of things. It is great. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely, nice long list of all of the things that I would want to know about this field. Is it super, super in depth? Mm, I don't think so. But uh, overall, these are all of the different references it found, and it's a great starting point. You can also do things that you can't do in other AI tools. For example, you can open in docs easily, you can copy it. But the one thing I really liked about it, and check this out, is that it actually produced a little table. Now, I've not seen any other deep research tool produce a a table it's just been text it's just been bullet points so i kind of like this is this a really cool kind of uh, like uh, table? Well, no, it's pretty high level, but it's something that I could use potentially at the beginning of a review article or something like that. So I like the fact that it's actually got other types of formats of output that the other tools just don't have. But overall, it's done a great job. And each one of these little things, each one of these little chevrons, I think they're called, you click on them and then it tells you where it got that information. If you click on it, it will take you to the place where it found it. Now, unlike ChatGPT, it doesn't sort of take you to the web Website and then highlight highlight like that where it got the information from it just tells you roughly like I got it from this web page or I got it from uh, this place you know so overall it's good I don't like the fact that it's not referenced as in like an academic reference but I didn't really ask it to um, and I'm not sure if it can anyway so the academic referencing stuff is lacking if you're going to use it for research and science but overall yeah like if I was starting a new research field and I wanted to know something about it I would go here type it in and in 10 minutes after you 
you've been to the tea room and you've eaten the leftover cake from the retirement party of someone that left uh, ages ago, then uh, yeah, you know, well, I say left, they kind of just tapped out mentally. I mean, like they were physically in the building, but were they here mentally and spiritually? Probably not. We've all been there. Um, okay, so uh, this is what it put out and I, yeah, I, I like it. It's, it's a good first start if you're starting a new research field. Um, I don't like that it can't sort of like, you can't sort of like copy and paste it all, but if we open it up in docs, this arguably is sort of like a better way. You can see it keeps the, the tables in there, which I really like. And here you can see it's got the little 13, 12. It's got the little numbers which tell you where it referenced. So it's much better in docs than it is in their interface for academic purposes. Um, now, the one thing I wanted to know actually is the table function even more powerful than they're letting on? So here I said, find me the best materials and compare them in a table. And this is what it did. The one thing I didn't like about this is that it only sort of like provided the output here and it didn't put it in the actual sort of like report that it generated where you can click open in docs. You'd have to copy and paste this across despite what it told me. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But the fact that it's here is probably just like good enough. And if this bit is annoying, you can get rid of it by closing that panel. And uh, there we are, this is what it looks like. This is what they gave me. Um, and uh, yeah, I it was actually really good. Like. I'm not sure if it did deep research, um, but it certainly did research. It didn't take as long as the first sort of like approach. So maybe it's got stuff in its database that it knows about, but ultimately it didn't take long, didn't have to wait very long. If I wanted it to do it properly, I'd probably start a whole new um, deep research kind of chat. And then I would probably allow it to go away for 10 minutes and do this sort of like in detail rather than just tagging it on to another deep research thing that I've done. But this is what it um, produced for me. I really like it. It did a really great job. And you can see down here, it says slash immersive, which means it ended an immersive section in HTML code, but it didn't actually put it in the immersive section. I assume that was meant to be the column on the side. It didn't do that. And then it said, I've added a table comparing the best materials um, to the beginning of the report. And it didn't do that either. So a little bit of a bug at the moment, but really I don't care because if I've got the uh, doc open, I can just copy and paste this across. But if I was to do that, unfortunately, I would lose out on all of the nice referencing that you get when you copy and paste it across to a doc. So not super awesome, not a great way to use that at the moment. But nonetheless, it did a good enough job. And I think uh, it probably wouldn't be my go-to uh, deep research tool at the moment for academia and research for the reasons I mentioned. But if you wanted a table, if you wanted um, you know, uh, something presented nicely in a format that's just not bullet points, which a lot of AI tools just love, um, then consider using this. I mean, I also over here asked it about do research and then write a literature review. Instead of just doing research, I wanted it to do an actual uh, literature review. And uh, it said here, uh, focus on research from the last five years and write according to academic standards. And then it says, I've put together a research plan. Yes, yes, we know you can do that. Um, and then I said, nah, it's good. The research plan is good. I don't want to change it. And uh, this is what it came up with. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, ba -ba 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 -ba, then let's just take a look at a few of these to make sure they're actually sort of within the past five years. So we don't want it anything but uh, sort of like earlier than 2020. But uh, let's have a look. Here we've got something from 2022. Here we've got something from 2021. So it seems to have on those two little checks, you can check yourself. Um, it seems to have sort of like understood that part of the brief. And uh, you can see that it's kind of like kept within mostly the academic realm. There's this one, which is like a YouTube video. So ideally, it wouldn't go out to YouTube videos and stuff like that. That's where using something like size space deep review, you can be assured that it's just going to stay in the academic realm. But nonetheless, it's done a really great job. You can open it in docs, you can obviously go and edit this a great first start if you've already got access to this, and you're already paying for it. I think these deep research tools are getting better and better. Let me know how you went with Gemini AI in the comments. I'd love to hear how you're using it for academia and research. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about DeepSeek AI and how you can use it for research. It's really awesome. Go check it out.